Yeah, that's tough. You're in demand. Okay. okay, good afternoon and welcome to the 2 p.m. agenda this March uh, 18th, um, Thursday of the Consumer Protection and Commerce Committee. Today we'll be hearing certain Senate bills. For those joining us for the first time uh, in this hearing, Thank you for joining us and welcome. I did wanna go over a, thick, a few quick ground rules um, if you're new to the committee. Um, uh, one, if you could keep yourself muted until you're called and recognized by me, that'll help uh, to facilitate our process. Also, uh, there's a two minute time limit per testifier. So when your time has expired, I'll start to ask you if you can please summarize. That'll also be helpful to ensure that we can get through all of our bills today. And lastly, if everyone can just make sure uh, to extend uh, the Aloha spirit for which I think Hawaii is very special. Um, testimony. No matter whether we agree or disagree, I think We're that would be most helpful. Um, first of all, we have SB 1342, SD1. This is relating to illegal gambling. I will also note for our audience and for uh, our legislative members in attendance, because this is a triple referral, um, I will uh, take this matter by just... Um, uh, I will take this matter, um, uh, unlike the rest of the bills, um, and take it up for a vote uh, to help our drafters meet tonight's triple referral deadline. Um, and then we'll continue with the rest of the hearing. So uh, we'll commence with each uh, SB 1342, this is relating to illegal gambling, and this would include under the offense of promoting gambling in the first degree, the act of hosting activities uh, that advances gambling activity on real property. We have our first and only testifier, the, uh, let's see, City and County of Honolulu uh, Department of the Prosecuting Attorney offering comments. Uh, good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee, Deputy Prosecutor Trisha Nakamatsu, I'm on behalf of the Honolulu Prosecuting Attorney's Department. Uh, we do support the intent of this bill. Um, we definitely agree that illegal gambling is a problem that um, law enforcement could use more tools to address. Um, however, we do have some concerns about this particular uh, proposal only because we're not sure that the language necessarily achieves what the uh, proponents of the bill may be intending or perhaps the, the part committee who amended the language. Um, and we go into more detail in our testimony, but in particular, we felt that certain phrases were perhaps a, a bit broader than the legislature would like or intend in that receiving and entertaining others or providing services and resources to others would encompass likely the cashiers, dealers, maintenance people, whoever might be there, the very low level workers. And it's unclear whether the intent is to make those all felony charges. Um, I mean, if, if it is the intent, we are, uh, that's certainly the legislature's purview. Um, but we just want to be sure that you're aware that all of those people then would be charged with felonies. Um, we believe the intent is really to go up to the higher level people, um, organizers, promoters, um, perhaps even the property owners. Property owners, we feel, is, is going to be almost impossible to get um, with no matter what type of language you add, because this knowing um, mindset is just, it's so hard to get them to, to prove that they knew if they're not actually on property, if they're not physically there. Same goes for organizers, um, although there may be perhaps a chance of getting a few of those, it, it would be few and far between. Um, we have um, gone into more detail about other alternatives. Um, if you have any questions, we're available and always happy to work with the committee or any stakeholders who may be interested on, on further working with the language. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, members, any questions for uh, the prosecutor's office? Okay, seeing none, we'll uh, recess short, uh, take a short recess uh, before we commence voting on SB 1342. Recess.
Okay, reconvening for decision making on SB 1342 and the rest of our agenda. Uh, my thanks to the members for indulging me uh, and helping out our House Majority Staff Officers meet uh, the drafting deadline. Uh, the recommendation here um, is to change in the existing bill uh, because I think there's some ambiguities in the existing subpoint D. Uh, existing subpoint D. Um, uh, language. Um, I'd like to clarify that by amending subpoint D, um, striking out the present language and including a new subpoint D that says engaging in activities in which a person receives or entertains other persons as guests with the intent of advancing gambling activity on real property. Um, that reference is advancing gambling activity is already defined in the statute and has myriad uh, penalties. So I think it better comports um, there um, with that. I'd also like to insert a defective date of January 1, 2050 to make sure that we have to have continued discussion on this measure. Uh, members, any comments or questions on the recommendation for SB 1342 HD1? Okay, uh, seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote, please. The recommendation of the chair is to pass SB 1342 SD1 with amendments. Chair and Vice Chair vote aye. Representative Aquino is excused. Representative Har. Aye. Representative Hashem. Aye. Representative Kong. Aye. Representative Mizuno. Aye. Representative Morikawa. Aye. Representative Onishi. Aye. Representative Tarnes. Aye. Representative Matsumoto. Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Thank you very much, members. And now we'll return to our usual hearing protocol, which is to move through uh, all of the bills, hear testimony, question, answer, and then vote at the end of the agenda because the rest of them are not triple referred bills. Uh, next, we have SB 191 SD2 relating to condominiums. Uh, and this is substantially similar to HB 641, which we heard and passed out of this committee. This would provide uh, earlier this year, uh, this session rather, this provides a process for associations to incorporate power of sale language into their governing uh, documents, as well as clarifies legislative intent uh, that the explicit grant of power of sale to associations is not required for the purposes of forcing association liens um, under the associate alternate power of sale foreclosure process. Uh, the testifiers who have indicated they would be present, we have Phil Nerney with CAI in support. Thank you, Chair, Vice Chair, and Committee members. The Community Associations Institute supports uh, Senate Bill 191, Senate Draft 2, for reasons stated in our written testimony. Essentially, the courts have cast doubt on prior legislative action, and this would conform to the um, stated concerns of the judiciary. Thank you. Thank you. We also have uh, Dale Arthur Head in, uh, as an individual in opposition, uh, who is not present. Thank you. Uh, and do we have Jeff Sedino offering comments? Yes, I'm here. Good afternoon, Chair Johansson, Vice Chair Kitagawa, and members of the committee. My name is Jeff Sedino. I'm a condo owner. I'm overall opposed to non-judicial foreclosures for multiple reasons, but um, I did submit written testimony on HB 641 with half a dozen what I thought were constructive comments that acknowledged the interests of both the associations as well as the owners. Um, unfortunately, none of those comments were uh, included in the draft that was sent over to the Senate. Um, out of 300,000 individuals that live in condominiums, I was the only individual to submit constructive comments. And it was just disheartening that none of those comments were incorporated. But I submitted uh, testimony ag again for this bill and basically the same comments and just want to highlight a couple of the most important ones. Um, the supporters of the non-judicial foreclosures say that they have acknowledged the concerns of owners by incorporating an opt-out clause in this current bill. 
but the exact language is, quote, an owner may preserve a potential defense, end quote, um, against the non-judicial foreclosure. I'm not a lawyer, I'm just a regular person, but to me, that does not sound like an opt-out clause. Um, that might be one thing that I actually agree with, with the association advocates is that there should be an opt-out clause. And if there should be, I think we should just make it black and white. If that phrase could be changed to very simply, an owner may opt out. And that is subparagraph C. Um, I think we could all agree to that. Um, the second thing is the 14 day minimum notification. Non-judicial foreclosures have been debated in the public for the past five years, and there's still no consensus. It is beyond my understanding how it can be expected that an individual owner who is not educated in these areas could educate themselves on the pros and cons in only 14 days and vote on it is just beyond my understanding. So if we could, I would ask to change that to, you know, 60 days. Um, and then just quickly that this should be up to a vote by the association and not the board, since it very significantly affects the entire association. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. Thank you very much. Uh, members, please note that uh, we have numerous testimonies proffered in support, opposition, and comments, but uh, those three that I called are the only uh, individuals or organizations noting that they wish to testify um, virtually in person today. Members, any questions on SB 191? Okay, seeing no questions, um, just for the historical record, I will also note that HB 641 did not cross over to the Senate. Uh, so this is the only vehicle alive uh, containing um, these proposed changes to the law. Next members, we have SB 148, SB1. This is relating to taxation. This requires certain landlords, lessors, or plaintiffs in a summary possession action to provide the general excise tax license, uh, excuse me, general excise tax license in good standing. Um, let's see, on this measure, first we have the Department of Taxation offering comments. A good afternoon, Marky, on behalf of um, Isaac Choi in the Department of uh, the uh, Department of Taxation. The department will stand on its written testimony offering comments. I will be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we also have um, indicating they will be present the Tax Foundation of Hawaii, Tom Yamachika offering comments. Uh, thank you, Chair and members, Tom Yamachika from the Tax Foundation. Uh, I do wanna apologize for uh, uh, there is a misunderstanding of uh, on my part that was written into my testimony. Uh, I, I thought the bill had called for a tax clearance, but it actually just calls for a valid license. Um, so that part's a mistake. Uh, however, uh, we uh, would still adhere to our comment that uh, the um, uh, the proposed measure may be overkill in situations where uh, the proposed uh, eviction uh, is not due to, you know, non-payment of rent. Uh, if, it, if it involves, for example, uh, illegal activity on the property or health and safety concerns, uh, it might not be appropriate at that, uh, you know, on those types of facts. I'd be happy to answer any questions, sir. Thank you. Let's see, we also have Hope Services Hawaii. Kristen and Alice in support. Aloha, thank you for hearing my testimony today. Um, I work for Hope Services. We're the largest homeless services provider on Hawaii Island. And I just wanted to share a quick story with you about why this bill is so critical. Um, so in serving the homeless population, we face a lot more barriers than um, house people faced um, in making sure that they register. Posted a voter registration drive at our shelters across the island. And 
the amount of effort that went into it, um, you know, at the time we were pumped, we were like, we're going to get people in. This is great. Um, I had a several phone calls with the office of elections. Um, we made flyers, we posted them up. We were in communication with the shelters. We coordinated with several different staff at the shelters across the Island. We had somebody pick up lock boxes from the office of elections, drop them off and then set a schedule to take them around to different shelters. Um, and it worked. We got several people registered for their first time. But afterward, thinking about it, it was just so many extra barriers that people who are houseless have to face in order to vote, especially people who have been on the street, who lose their IDs, um, who don't have access to transportation and maybe not don't have Internet access or would even know where to start in order to register. So one of the first things our staff do when we take somebody in is we help them get their ID, replace it. Um, just really quickly I'm um, on the wrong uh, hearing aren't I <laughs> uh, right right hearing maybe maybe the wrong bill this is about um, summary oh, discussion um, and a general exercise tax license but if you're you did sign up to testify so you're more than welcome to testify on on that measure as well okay I apologize <laughs> I'm trying to do two at once um, okay yeah for this one I'll keep it short and sweet um, when a landlord owns a house um, and rents it out uh, owning land is not an it's not an infinite resource. It's like a piece of a pie, um, and when somebody takes that piece of a pie, it means that there's less for everybody else. And in order to have that privilege of having that piece of that pie, the landlord really should, at the very least, be paying their taxes. That's the bare minimum we should be asking. Um, we see we see problems um, with landlords not being hesitant to rent to people who are overcoming homelessness, and the ease of eviction, it just makes that even worse. So on behalf of Pope Services, I'd like to um, respectfully ask that you pass this measure. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, members, please note that that's the extent of those testifiers indicating they'd be present in our virtual hearing to testify. There's also uh, individual testimony uh, in support, opposition, and with comments on this measure, SB 148. Uh, with that, uh, members, any questions on SB 148? Okay, I'm um, seeing no questions on SB 148, then we'll move on to SB 1101. This is relating to hurricane preparedness. Uh, please note members that uh, the House Companion HB 947 also passed out of this committee, uh, this administration bill. Um, this would establish the safe home program to provide matching and uh, non-matching grants for installation of wind resistive devices to owners of single family owner occupied residential properties in certain circumstances. Uh, first off, we have uh, Commissioner Hayashida from the Insurance Division of DCCA in support. Good afternoon, uh, Chair Johansson, Vice Chair Kitagawa, members of the committee. Um, the department stands by its written testimony in support of this administration bill and requests an amendment, which is located in our written testimony. We thank you for the opportunity to testify today and will be available to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we also have the Hawaii State Energy Office, Maria Tomei, in support. Aloha Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. You have our written testimony in support. We're available for questions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we also have the Hawaii Emergency Management Agency, Hayima Luke Myers in support, or David Lopez. Yes, good afternoon, Chair and Vice Chair. This is David Lopez. I'm the Executive Officer for Hayima. And on behalf of the Administrator, Luke Myers, Hayima stands on its written testimony in support of SB 1101. <laughs> Uh, provided there's no conflict with the governor's budget. Thank you for this opportunity and we're available for discussion. Thank you very much. Uh, and lastly, we have uh, Blake Oshiro with AIG in support. Not present, Chair. Uh, who is not present. Uh, members, please note that we also have numerous other um, testimonies in support uh, on this measure, both from individuals and organizations. Members, any questions on SB 1101? Okay. Uh, 
Seeing none, uh, then we'll move on to our next agenda item. SB 601, SD1, this is relating to roofing contractors. So this would prohibit roofing contractors from offering to pay in any monetary form and insured insurance deductible as the insured to hire the contractor. It also allows insureds or insured individuals within uh, contracts with roofing contractors within five business days of receiving notification from an insurer that the claim has been denied or is not compensable. On SB 601, uh, first off, we have Candace Ito with the contractor's license board in opposition. Aloha, Chair Johansson, Vice Chair Kitagawa, and members of the committee. I'm Candace Ito, and I'm the Executive Officer of the Contractors License Board. And the board stands on its <clears throat> written testimony and opposition of this bill. So just to point out that the board firmly believes that the contractor licensing law is not the appropriate statute to address unlicensed public adjusters, which this bill intends to do. And the insurance division already has um, laws pertaining to public adjusters. So I'm here for any questions, if you have any. Thank you. Uh, thank you. We also have uh, State Farm Insurance in support. Rick Sujimura. Chair, members, uh, Rick Sujimura on behalf of State Farm. Um, we'll stand on our written testimony. If there are any questions, we'd be more than happy to answer them. Thank you. Uh, we also have Tim Lyons with the Roofing Contractors Association of Hawaii in opposition. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, got me? Okay. Um, yes, we are, we are opposed to the bill. Uh, we want to point out that this bill applies in only the very, very narrowest of circumstances. It does not apply to all roofing jobs. It doesn't apply to all re-roofing jobs. It just applies when there's storm damaged roofing and not even then, but only in instances where the homeowner and the contractor have agreed to do a certain amount of work. And then the insurance company says that's fine, but we're not gonna pay for it or we're not gonna pay for all of it. Um, there are really three problems with the bill. Um, the first is the five-day rescission period. And there is already a three-day rescission period in 481C that applies to all door-to-door -door sales. Um, and we don't have not heard anything why this should be any different. Um, that rescission period is evidenced by a deposit, I mean, by a, uh, a postmark. The, uh, this bill says all you do is deposit it in a mailbox. It doesn't have to be postmarked. Uh, it doesn't have to be stamped. You just deposit it and that starts the clock ticking. We're also quite, not quite sure how to handle if a claim is for $2,000, but the carrier is only gonna reimburse the homeowner $1,995. Um, it seems that that would fall under this. We're not sure that that's fair. And there's also no termination period for this notice. It could be a year, a month, we're not sure. Um, lastly, I just wanna point out, and it's very important, that um, roofing contractors, believe it or not, are not the only ones that do roofs. Um, steel, structural steel contractors do metal roofs. Sheet metal contractors do metal roofs. General contractors do shake roofs. Um, it does not appear that this bill applies to those other in, those other industries, and we're not sure why. So we think, um, in addition to the fact that Senate Bill 1096, which this committee, I believe, passed out relating to public adjusters, um, covers the subject matter as well as far as individuals acting as public adjusters. So. Based on its limited applicability and the fact that other areas all seem to be covered, we are not in favor of the bill. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, members, please note that's the extent of our testifiers indicating that they would be present uh, in our hearing. We do additional supportive testimony um, on this measure. Members, any questions on SB 601? 
Okay, seeing no questions on SB 601, then we'll move on to SB 599. This is relating to massage therapists. This is substantially similar to HB 223, which passed out of this uh, CPC committee uh, in earlier hearings. Um, this would require massage therapy licensees uh, to complete 12 hours of continuing education within a two year period preceding their renewal. Um, and it includes specific types of uh, education requirements. Uh, on this measure, we have our first testifier, uh, Rise Doi with the Board of Massage Therapy. Oh, I'm sorry, who didn't indicate they would be present. Actually, members, uh, it appears that no one indicated they would be present to testify in this measure, but please note all the testimony proffered by organizations and individuals was either in support or with comments. Unfortunately, there is no one members to ask questions to. But I will tell you, this is substantially similar to HB 223. The difference mainly is in the effective date. The Senate vehicle gives a whole, basically gives a renewal and a half period before this is this continuing education requirement is effectuated compared to what left us in the house. That's the primary difference. Um, Next, we'll move on then to SB 764 relating to human trafficking. Uh, this measure also is essentially similar to HB 459, which passed out of our CPC committee um, in early February. This is relating to human trafficking and it has a permanent commercial driver's license disqualification for a commercial driver's license or commercial learner's permit holder who is convicted of a felony involving a severe form of trafficking in persons without the possibility of reinstatement. Uh, this also is proposed uh, for federal conformity. Uh, do we have the Department of Transportation, Lynn Araki Regan in support? Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair members, Lynn Araki Regan from the State Department of Transportation. We stand on our written testimony in strong support of this bill. Um, as you mentioned, Chair, you know, this is important um, as we need to conform with federal regulations. Um, should this bill not be approved for whatever reason, the state will be um, not in conformance and will be at risk of losing critical federal funds through the form of penalties. So we humbly ask for your support. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, members, that's the extent of our present testifiers. Any questions for the Department of Transportation? Okay. Um, Thank you. If not, then seeing none, we'll move on to our second to the last agenda item, SB 309, SB 1, and this is relating to privacy. Uh, I did not hear uh, the House bill, so this is its first time um, in the Consumer Protection and Commerce Committee. Uh, this would add the intentional disclosure or threat of disclosure of certain types of deep fake images or videos to the offense of violation of privacy in the first degree. Uh, so, um, Proffered in the spirit of trying to update our statutes with some of the harms and crimes that are perpetuated in 21st century environment. Uh, let's see. Of the testifiers indicating that they would be present, uh, we have Randall Platt with the Honolulu Police Department in support. Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, and members of the committee. I'm Captain Randall Platt with the Honolulu Police Department. We stand on our written testimony in support of this bill, and I'll be available for any questions, should there be any. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we also have Mauricia Palma Elmore with SAG AFTRA in support. Hi, this is Mauricia Palma Elmore with the Screen Actors Guild and American Federation of Television and Radio Artists. And we stand in support, I stand on our testimony in support. I'm also here for questions if um, there are any questions. Thank you so much for hearing the bill. Thank you. Uh, next, we have the Motion Picture Association of America offering comments. Yes, thank you. Um, Chair Johansson, Vice Chair Kitagawa, my name is Melissa Patak with the Motion Picture Association. Um, and I also would stand on our testimony. We have asked for some amendments. So I thought, even though that is covered in my testimony, I would just explain those if you think that um, uh, would be helpful, but I don't wanna take more time than is necessary. Um, we, 
excuse me, we also had discussions with the Screen Actors Guild, with Mercia's colleagues um, on the East Coast, and we had some back and forth and exchanges about some amendments. And it's uh, my understanding that they have no objections to these amendments. You're more than welcome to, to proceed and talk about your amendments if you'd like. Great, thank you very much. So uh, again, uh, amendments to just clarify uh, the, the scope of the bill um, in the, uh, in, par the, in paragraph C, uh, we're recommending adding the words realistic photographic before the word image in, in uh, the two places where the word image uh, or video appears. And again, that will um, ensure that the bill is narrowed to the type of conduct and activity that is the goal of the bill. Pictures that make it appear that someone is doing something that they did not do in a convincing and a believable manner. Um, also in that paragraph, we add the reasonable person standard, uh, which also helps focus the bill on the type of activity that is undesirable and leaves out the kind of pictures that most people would not find to be authentic or realistic. Um, at the end of the paragraph, we suggest adding the phrase and the depicted person suffers harm. Uh, this would be symmetrical with the requirement that there is an intent to harm uh, and it follows from, from that. Uh, and since it's a criminal penalty, there should be a victim uh, who can assert and demonstrate they experienced harm from the manipulated image. And finally, uh, we added some um, additions to the exemptions, which really track the First Amendment, a matter of legitimate public concern, uh, a work of political or newsworthy value or similar, uh, commentary, criticism, or disclosure that is otherwise protected by the Hawaii Constitution or the U.S. Constitution, um, and then we also add um, the following sentence for the purpose uh, of this subdivision, sexually explicit material that, it, it, excuse me, sexually explicit material is not newsworthy um, solely because the depicted individual is a public figure. Um, so uh, we think that limits the exemptions and doesn't give a safe harbor to anyone um, uh, uh, for this kind of um, conduct, which we do not condone. Um, so that explains the amendments. I'm happy to answer any questions and thank you for your attention to this bill. Thank you, Melissa. Members, that's the extent of present testifiers um, indicating that they wanted to testify uh, virtually. Please note that there is numerous other organizational and individual support proffered on SB 309. Uh, members, any questions on SB 309? Okay, uh, seeing none, then we'll move on to our last agenda item, SB 1240, SD1. This is relating to tax conformity. This requires the state to conform to those provisions of the Consolidated Appropriations Act relating to taxable income and deductible expenses. Uh, we heard the House companion, but because this bill was crossing over faster, uh, finance decided to wait for SB 1240 instead of hearing the House version. Uh, first off, we have the Department of Taxation. Uh, Department of Taxation, offering comments on SB 1240. Okay, I guess uh, we will move on from the Department of Taxation uh, to the Hawaii Restaurant Association, Victor Lim. Hi, good afternoon, Chair Johansson and uh, Vice Chair Kitagawa and members of the Committee on Co Consumer Protection and Commerce. The Hawaii Restaurant Association representing over 3,500 restaurants here in Hawaii strongly support SB 1240 SD1, requiring our state to confirm with provisions of the Consolidated Appropriations Act of 2021 relating to taxable income and dis deductible expenses. First and foremost, I just want to say that without the Congress uh, passing out this bill and getting the money available, many of our members will not be in business today. And that's how critical this PPP funds was for us. Congress specifically designated PPP loans as a tax-free emergency lifeline for small businesses struggling to stay open amid the pandemic. And the CARES Act and acted in March 27, excluded the PPP loans from taxable income. 
Congress also intended that expenses paid using the PPP loans to be deductible expenses, but they forgot to include that language in the statute. The tre Treasury Department later ruled that, that those expenses paid with PPP loans cannot be expenses, cannot be expensed. Therefore, on December 27, 2020, Congress again passed the Consolidated Appropriations Act for 2021, which was signed into law, specifically amending that the PPP funds will indeed be deductible. Through this COVID-19 pandemic, many restaurants and businesses here in Hawaii were able to use this resource to keep our doors open, keep our employees on the payroll, provide medical insurance for our staff, and keep them up, away from the unemployed role. We have used these funds so that we do not go out of business and at the same time taking care of our employees. If you try and tax us and go against a Congress intent, we will have you pay the state with funds that we do no longer have because we have expended out. If you are in our shoes, you will understand our dilemma as a small business. This tax conformity as proposed in SB 1240 SD 1 is consistent with what many other states have done in permitting the treatment to be the same as the federal level. We want to thank you for giving us this opportunity uh, to share our plea. Thank you, Victor. Uh, we also have uh, NFIB Hawaii, Melissa Pavlicek. Aloha, my name is Melissa Pavlicek. The National Federation of Independent Business represents hundreds of business owners here in Hawaii, often the smallest businesses, typically fewer than 10 employees and with less than a million dollars in gross revenue. Although the National NFIB Small Business Optimism Index rose in February with a slight bump from the prior month, it's still below the 47 year average. The economic recovery remains uneven for small businesses, especially those still managing state and county regulations right here in Hawaii. Enacting legislation or confirming that state rules, confirming that state rules will address the issue of taxable income for the Paycheck Protection Plan funds will add a measure of certainty and stability in a very uncertain time. We support this measure and ask you to do so. Thank you. Thank you. We also have the Tax Foundation of Hawaii, Tom Yamachika. Uh, thank you, Chair and members. Tom Yamachika from the Tax Foundation of Hawaii. Um, the, uh, the problem that this bill is trying to address uh, is that there are a number of uh, provisions that were contained in the Consolidated Appropriations Act uh, that did not affect the Internal Revenue Code directly, but uh, they affected interpretations or you know, there were directives to the uh, to the Treasury and to the IRS as to how to uh, apply those laws. Um, so our, our normal, uh, you know, annual conformity bill, uh, what we call Tax 01, uh, usually can't pick that up if it's not within the Internal Revenue Code, because the way uh, Tax 1 is normally structured, uh, it picks up the Internal Revenue Code you know, which is uh, which is defined uh, uh, in Hawaii statute as chapter one with uh, with a few additions. Um, uh, that part is picked up, and it's not picked up if it's not in the code. Okay, so that's that's the dilemma that that gives rise to this bill. Now, uh, the the big wrinkle, of course, is that uh, when the American Rescue Plan Act was passed. Uh, they included a provision, sec section 9901, uh, that says, uh, you know, states, you can't pass revenue losers. Uh, if you want to do that, you have to eat it yourselves. Um, now, uh, is this bill a revenue loser? Probably yes. Uh, is that the kind of thing that, that Treasury really wanted to prohibit? We don't know. Um, and it is so soon after uh, the uh, American Recovery Plan Act uh, that, 
that Treasury really hasn't had a chance to give the states guidance on, you know, what's uh, what's fair and what's foul yet. Uh, so we think the proper thing to do at this point in time, Chair, would be uh, to keep the bill alive uh, until uh, such time as Treasury gives us a better idea uh, of what's fair and what's foul. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Tom. Uh, we also have the Chamber of Commerce of Hawaii, Sherry Manor McNamara. Uh, good afternoon, Chair Johansson, and Vice Chair Kitagawa, and members of the committee. Thank you uh, for the opportunity to testify. We will stand on our written testimony and we support the arguments laid out by NFIB as well as Hawaii Restaurant Association. Uh, we believe that Congress declared that allowing deductions for PPP expenses would better serve the purpose of the whole PPP loan program and that denying a state tax deduction for payroll, utilities, rent, and other business expenses paid with PPP would reduce the effectiveness of the PPP loan program in Hawaii. So we respectfully ask that the committee pass this bill out for further discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we also have, let's see, right here. Oh. That's it, right? Yeah. Oh, 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 thank you. Uh, we also have, excuse me, Dave Rolf from the Hawaii Auto Dealers Association. Chair, Thanks. Vice Chair, members of the committee. Uh, the Hawaii Auto Dealers Association stands in strong support of this bill, and thank you for the opportunity to testify. We'll be here to answer any questions. Thank you. Uh, Members, I believe that's all of the testifiers who indicated they wish to testify uh, virtually. Please note that there's numerous other um, testimonies in support uh, of this measure, both as businesses and, oh, as businesses. Uh, members, any questions on SB 1240? Okay, seeing no questions, then we will recess for decision making, recess.
Okay, reconvening our 2 p.m. agenda for decision making purposes on certain House, uh, certain Senate bills, excuse me. Uh, first off, SB 191, SD2 relating to condominiums. Um, I think that there are very informed opinions on both sides of the issue, and there's still clearly um, issues and contention that needs to be worked out. But because uh, the House bill is no longer moving and this is the only vehicle for discussion purposes, I would like to keep SB 191 alive and advance it to its next committee. But I would like to have HB 641HD1, which was previously passed by this committee on February 10th, 2021, and replace the contents of SB 191 with the contents of uh, HB 641, um, the latest house draft. Uh, members, any comments or questions on the recommendation? Okay, seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote, please. The recommendation of the chair is to pass SB 191 SD2 with amendments. Chair and Vice Chair vote aye. Representative Aquino. Representative Har. Aye. 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 Representative aye. Hasha. Aye. Representative Kong. Aye. Representative Mizuno? Aye. Representative Morikawa? Aye. Representative Onishi? Aye. Representative Tarnas? Aye. Representative Matsumoto? Aye. Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Thank you. Next members on SB 148, SD1 relating to taxation. Um, I think this is an interesting and novel measure. There is no house equivalent, so I would like to keep this uh, vehicle moving as well. I would like to adopt um, Mr. David Chi's amendment that he proffered in his testimony. Um, and it would be adding um, the clarifying modifier uh, that um, this new proposal would be based on non-payment of monetary rent. So just um, for those watching, the change would be uh, in chapter 666, writ of possession general excise tax license as a condition to the issuance of a writ of possession uh, a landlord, lesser, or plaintiff in a summary possession action based on non-payment of monetary rent shall submit uh, to the issuing court a general excise tax license in good standing. Um, I think this further narrows the scope to what the author was trying to achieve, which is those individuals who are actually collecting monies as opposed to those landlords who um, basically receive in-kind in um, compensation for uh, their renter and or it also would not end up ultimately compromising the legitimate prerogatives of a landlord who needs to potentially take summary possession based on health and safety issues that are immediate for other tenants or the property. Uh, the date, uh, the bill is already defective. So with that, uh, members, any comments or questions on the recommendation? Okay, thank you. Seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote, please. The recommendation of the chair is to pass SB 148 SD1 with amendments. Uh, noting the presence of all members, are there any reservations? Any no's? Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Thank you. Next, moving on uh, to this administration bill, SB 1101 SD2 relating to hurricane preparedness. Uh, I think this is a great uh, measure and I appreciate the administration for proffering it. Uh, I would like to pass this uh, by just amending this bill to insert the insurance commissioner's suggested amendment, making uh, this safe at home, a safe home program subject to the procurement code, as well as various technical and non-substantive amendments. Uh, and it already has a defective date. Members, any comments or questions on the recommendation? Okay, seeing none, Vice Chair, for the vote, please. The recommendation of the chair is to pass SB 1101 SD2 with amendments, noting the presence of all members. Are there any reservations? Any no's? Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Thank you. Next member is on SB 601 SD1 relating to roofing contractors. As there's no house vehicle um, alive like this, I would like to keep this moving for discussion purposes and make the following amendments to this bill. First, based on the potential confusion it may engender in consumers' minds, I would like to blank out the number of business days um, uh, from which the uh, insured may rescind a contract. So instead of the fifth business day, we'll keep it blank for now and note the five in the committee report, as well as the fact that all general house-to-house -house, um, sales generally have a three-day rescission period. Um, 
Next, uh, on page four of the bill, I would like to change the effective upon deposit in the US mail to um, uh, certified and regist certified or registered mail uh, so that there's more of a tracking mechanism as well as official proof since this is a matter of contracts um, and uh, important business between consumer and contractor. Next, um, I would on page seven like to amend the uh, definition for roofing contractor, uh, taking into account the testimony that the uh, current definition uh, has some issues. I would like to change uh, the definition in the following way. Uh, right now it reads, roofing contractor means a person including but not limited to a person that is a non-resident roofing contractor, independent contractor, or subcontractor. Uh, and this is where the changes begin whose scope of practice is within the C42 specialty contractor classification specified under this chapter, deleting gutter downspout and siding services, which comports with the contractor's license board request, and then continue on with the existing contents of the bill for a fee who offers uh, to engage in or solicits roofing related services, so on and so forth. Um, so, I think this change in the definition uh, better encapsulates all types of roofing as opposed to just what may have been uh, inadvertently narrow in the original construction of this bill. Uh, I'd like to in, I also would like to put in a requirement um, that if an insured is going to uh, rescind the contract, in addition to this notice of rescission, they would also need to include proof uh, of the insurance claim being denied, just so that the contractor has uh, some verifiable proof uh, that, that this isn't just the abrogation of their contract for no um, valid cause. In addition to that, I would like to insert a defective date of January 1, 2015, and various technical and non-substantive amendments. Members, any questions or comments on those recommendations? Okay, thank you. Seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote, please. Recommendation of the Chair is to pass SB 601, SB 1 with amendments, noting the presence of all members. Are there any reservations? Any no's? Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Thank you on SB 599, SD 1 relating to massage therapists. Um, I'd like to pass this measure with a, uh, three main amendments. I'd like to strike the non-applicable preamble language in sub point two, which references advertising. Um, that probably was drafting based on a previous iteration of the bill. I'd like to insert a defective date of January 1, 2050 and make various technical and non-substantive amendments. Members, any comments or questions on the recommendation? Okay, seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote, please. The recommendation of the chair is to pass SB 599 SD1 with amendments, noting the presence of all members. Are there any reservations? Any no's? Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Thank you. Next on SB 764 relating to human trafficking. Um, I honor the creativity uh, of the Senate um, in trying to come up with a new definition, but because it deviates from the federal one, and this bill is not only um, uh, trying to uh, attack a terrible problem, but also important for federal conformity uh, and not jeopardizing our federal funds. Uh, I wanna make sure that uh, we comport best with um, the federal definition. So what I recommend doing is inserting the contents of uh, the house companion equivalent HB 459 HD2, which we passed out of this Consumer Protection and Commerce Committee on February 5th, 2021, um, and replacing the contents of this Senate vehicle with very similar contents from HB uh, 459, except for the fact that that definition does not try to amalgamate sex trafficking and human trafficking. And I think that while well intended is problematic in this Senate bill and may have other legal consequences that are unintended. Uh, let me make sure. Let me just double check that 459 has a defective date. Okay. 
Yes, and HP 459 HD2 has a defective date already. Uh, members, any comments or questions on the recommendation? Okay, seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote, please. The recommendation of the chair is to pass SB 764 SD1 with amendments, noting the presence of all members. Are there any reservations? Any no's? Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Thank you. Next on SB 309 SD1 relating to privacy, the recommendation here is to adopt the Motion Picture Association of America's amendments, inserting a defective date of January 1, 2015, and making various technical and non substantive amendments. Members, any comments or questions on the recommendation? Okay, uh, seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote, please. The recommendation of the chair is to pass SB 309 SD1 with amendments, noting the presence of all members. Are there any reservations? Any no's? Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Thank you. And lastly, members, SB 1240 SD1 relating to tax conformity. I think this is an important vehicle to keep alive for the Finance and Ways and Means Committees um, to ultimately broker. So just so that we make sure that the House has made a change to this bill so that it has to come back and go to conference, I'm going to change the defective date to, it's already defective, but I'm inserting a new defective date of January 1, 2050, so that there's an HD1 um, to this bill. Members, any comments or questions on the recommendation? Okay, seeing that, Vice Chair for the vote, please. The recommendation of the chair is to pass SB 1240 SD1 with amendments noting the presence of all members. Are there any reservations? Any no's? Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Okay, thank you so much, members. This committee hearing is adjourned.